Granny's more naked Granny's no 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 more naked I'm home! <laughs> Hello all of YouTube and welcome to my Driftless Planet Club discography review. Um, but before I talk about the band and the albums and all that stuff, I just want to tell you, during that intro skit, filming it, uh, I broke the lens on my camera. So if you could see a little bit of weird, like, you could see it right there. You see that line there? That's the crack in the lens. Uh, it still works. I couldn't really see it unless I was holding it up to light and it kind of looks like the light's pulling it into it. But to kind of show you what it looks like, um, let me see if I can get a good frame picture you can't really get a good picture of it but uh, uh anyway um the, the lens is broken it's it's cracked but it, it still works i can still film with it and i just can't film shining it light which i don't do often i'm not like hey look at this light guys so i think i'll be fine uh for at least a little while vlogs may get a little weird you may get that look uh, every now and then but regardless uh driftless pony club um if you've never listened to driftless pony club they're an indie rock band from chicago or based in chicago and um, their most notable, I guess, member is uh, Wheezy Waiter, YouTube's Wheezy Waiter, but um, they've been around since before YouTube and all that stuff. They've kind of, I guess, had this side to them where they're always just kind of quirky video makers because they have their own channel where they do quirky videos, but um, they also make really um, good indie rock, and I'm here to talk about their five albums, Janelle, Cholera, Expert, uh, Buckminster, and the one that came out this year, Magnificent. Um shouldn't take me too long to talk about all five of these records but uh to kind of base their sound you can i'll, I'll talk about it which is each of their uh, albums because you can kind of hear their roots in each of their albums but nevertheless let's go ahead and get this thing started and the first time they released was an album called janelle or janelle or janelle which came out in 2004 and uh this is kind of uh along the lines of what i would label a typical first album um you it's probably their most raw sounding, uh, but they're never like completely t like unproduced. It's still fairly produced for an indie rock band's first album, but the guitars all sound a lot more rough on this record, and even um, Wheezy Waiter's vocals uh, kind of feel a little bit um, low in the mix at times. But aside from those technical aspects, it's still a really good album. You can really hear the roots, especially in these first few albums. Um, where you can t tell that they're influenced by bands like the Pixies, as someone and some of the guitars, along with along the lines of um, Modest Mouse as well, early Modest Mouse on tracks like uh, Sexy Terrorist and Shallow Inland Sea, and even early Weezer. Um, but this album is is like an optimistic sounding, pessimistic. It's almost along the lines of some of the tracks off of that Lily Allen record in terms of being very down on itself. <laughs> like Sexy Terrorist has kind of this brighter sounding uh, instrumentation, but the lyrics are very um, pessimistic, or the beginning of Jackson Pollock is dead, talking about like, uh, dying, but the song sounds so bright and, and optimistic. It's, it's, it's a lovely combination that I do find myself finding a lot more interest in the more I listen to uh, music, but this album is fairly straightforward. It's, it's, it's just a really good indie rock record. Um, they really tap into that early 90s alternative rock sound on this release and the next release. A lot more so on the next release, because this one kind of seems just a lot more bright and, um, again, optimistic sounding. Uh, the pianos in the beginning of the track, Good Morning Little Bird, sound very uh, Matt and Kimish almost. Not as positive, not as energetic, but like that very just bright sounding um, piano style, like sound that you get with that. And it's just a very um, straightforward indie rock album this is but it's a good first album uh there's some really good tunes on here some really really good choruses uh like on manifest destiny and sexy terrorist and stuff uh, a lot of they're, they're hooky enough to where they get in your head but it's not like pop hooky and it's really it's really real crafted and i'm surprised that this record is as good as it is almost because i mean this band is fantastic they've made uh two albums that i would put in my end of the year list they made that last year's and this year's i love this year's album but i'll get to that when i do but um if you want to, if you want, I mean, all their albums are on iTunes. If you really want some good, uh, some good indie rock, I check out this record. Um, a lot of good, a lot of goodness coming from it. Yeah. My favorite track is probably Sexy Terrorist. I really like the, um, that song, like the first time I heard that song, I couldn't stop listening to it. And yeah, it's probably one of my favorite Jeffers Pony Club songs. It's a really good song. Let's talk about my favorite album there, shall we? And the second album they released was called Cholera, which was released back in 2006. And this is my favorite record of theirs. Um, it does a really good job of expanding the first record's sound while adding new elements into it, like 
um, more spaced out, grander sounding openings like on Lyle Loves It and Flip the Lever, which do a really good job of using reverb to bring you into the track while fading into what you know by them if you've heard the first record, along with uh, using its influences a little bit differently. Like the last record, they had the, the, the optimism with some of that, some of that um, darkness there in the lyricism, but not really in the performance, but they kind of get a lot more aggressive with their sound and and um, a lot more harsh with their sound. Like, not in a bad way, like harsh, like aggressively harsh. Like on the opening of uh, Inertia's a Bitch, where it sounds very aggressive and, and still optimistic, or a track like Let's Do This Here at the end, where uh, Weezy Waiters are literally just screaming while the band... Um, or the, while the bass line runs out that's going throughout the song and the drums just kind of have this really big feel to it. This album really does a good job of making the first sound bigger. It's a perfect example of a good second album. Um, and that's one of the reasons why my favorite. It's just a really good album. The production's ramped up um, a lot. The the sounds are a lot more bigger. The the reverb sounds are there a lot more. But whenever the band needs to get really crisp and tight and almost dry sounding, like on Clink, Clink, Clink and Skeletons, they do a really good job of doing that as well. Um, and it has my favorite song by them on it, Combustible on Contact. It almost sounds like a softer pixie song, like that a softer pixie Modest Mouse song. I know the two are kind of not completely really, but you'll hear it if you listen to it. Uh, it's a lot more spaced out. It's a lot more softer. It's toned down. And this album isn't like the most aggressive thing in the world, but it's a it's an interesting break from a lot of that uh, intensity that they've done with the instruments and uh, the vocals and all that stuff. And the band really ramps up their playing. Like the drummer in, in this band is actually really good. And on this record, he does a really good job of, of presenting himself on this record. He does some really good fills and some really good um, just backbeats as well. He's really good at diverse, being diverse. He's really good at being diverse in the mix. And everything just sounds a lot more tighter and crisp on this record, both from a production standpoint and from even a lyrical standpoint. You can really... He's starting to really... Whoever... I think I think um, Matt or wheezy way to write the songs i don't really know but one of them writes the songs and they do a really good job of of um using different metaphors to describe how they're feeling and they're not like as i mean the first album had some really good lyricism too but this one does a really good job of branching that out even more into different types of metaphors and stuff and yeah this is a really good record i mean i i won't really have much to say poorly about any of these records, but this one really stands out to me as, as the best. It does a really good job of starting to progress forward while really maintaining their their original album's roots intact. I wouldn't recommend starting with this record, but I definitely recommend this one second, partially because it's my favorite record, but it just does a really good job of incorporating very unique instrumentation with, or like unique indie-wise instrumentation with some really good alternative rock roots, and yeah. This 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 album is just awesome. Uh, my favorite song is Combustible on Contact. It's a really good, soft song. And the third album they released was called Expert, which was released back in 2009. And I actually recommend starting with this release and then working your way around their discography. It's that one album. I always have that album in the discography. I'm like, start here and branch around. And that's not just because it's the shortest release. It has like five songs. But it does a good job of pushing their sound forward while really keeping to the roots. You really have songs like Bike and Thinks Earthquake and even... Most of the tracks on here still have that feel of cholera and Janelle, but they do a good job of making their sound bigger. The courses on here are a lot bigger, like the ending of Bike or the chorus of Legends of Archery and Pluto vs. Neptune. The the sounds are a lot bigger. They're, they're using a lot grander soundscapes, but they're still keeping to the style of their first releases, especially on a track like Bike and Thanks Earthquake. They have a good job of keeping the... The mild and the aggressive. Bike is another one of my favorite Shifless Pony Club songs. And that that song is just a really good job of combining the uh, the aggressive guitars, even with the dance style positive optimism from Janelle. And this record is or this this I guess record, this short record. I, I almost want to call it an EP because it is so short, but it's really good. It, it kind of it's just a really short album. But uh it's, it's really good. It's a nice short listen, and it, that's why it's it's good. I always recommend smaller releases to people because it does a good job of, of setting their self, setting their grounds while pushing boundaries, especially in such a short period of time. Um, they almost have, the song like Pluto vs. Neptune almost has like a They Might Be Giants feel, which they kind of, like the keyboards kind of go to that with them, but the instrumentation still has that Weezer-y, Pixies, Modest Mouse sound, which they I do they do keep that throughout their material, but they do have a good way of making it their own. And, uh, yeah, this, this is just a really good short release. This was the first album I got by them. 
because uh, of Legends of Archery being a music video on uh, Weezy Weeder's channel, and it's just a fantastic record. It's really good. Like it's 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 really damn good. Get this, get this, get this, and work around it. It's really hard to say. It's a short release. There's not really much I can say, other than I really liked this album. My favorite song on it is Bike. I like Bike a lot. And the fourth record they release was called Buckminster, which was released last year. And if you had seen my albums of the year list last year, you'd know that it was on there. Uh, I really, really love this release. It's probably uh, tied for second favorite album of theirs with Expert. It's a really good record. And it's a concept album, too, on someone that I had no idea existed before this record. Uh, his name was Buckminster Fuller. And he was like... Uh, I'm totally not reading this off of Google, by the way. But he was a theorist, an architect, an engineer, and a bunch of other stuff. He was a guy that did a lot. So he kind of deserved his own album. But um, that the lyrics really lead towards his life and all that stuff. And I think that that's cool, that they decided to pay tribute to someone who isn't really known in history but did a lot. So from a concept standpoint, I respect him for doing that. I think it's cool. It'd be like someone writing a concept album about... The guy that invented Super Soakers, because it may have been all he was known for, but they may not be the only important thing he had done. I don't really know, but it's just, I have no idea. But this record, uh, that wasn't the only reason I liked it. It wasn't really the biggest reason why I liked the record last year. I liked it because it just sounds awesome. It does a great job of expanding Expert, because Expert becomes their root from this point on. Um, it used to be, or it was kind of a mix between Janelle and Cholera on Expert, but then Expert does a good job of crafting those two together. They're like, you know what? We're going to root from that now. The keyboards are, uh, all over this thing, but they provide more of a backbeat. They provide just more to add dynamics to their sound, a grander soundscape, really making them have a bigger sound. <laughs> and aside from that, uh, they're getting a lot more cleaner lyrically. That's not a bad thing. I just a note I wanted to make about it. Uh, starting from Expert, they really start to get more um, mature with their lyrics, I want to say, because they're starting to use bigger, again, concepts, writing a concept about Buckminster, but um, like these really abstract songs, uh, both instrumentally and lyrically, the guitar work on this thing is, is typical, but not typical. They do a really good job of, of twerking their influences to a point where they sound like Modest Mouse, but it's kind of weird, or they sound like the Pixies chord-wise, but it's still a little out there, and um, the everything about this album just sounds fantastic. The production's really good. The guitars, again, add that reverb, but they, they, they're they crisp when they need to be, like on Dimaxian Chronophile. That's a song name, first off. Dimaxian Chronophile. Uh, and American Princes do a really good job of being intimate and, and tight, but you have songs like uh, Inspectors of Inspectors and House of House of 18, 1982 Built Like a Ship. These are really odd song titles, but I love them. Um, do a really good job of being big and grand and just, ah, so awesome. The choruses are a lot more hookier, and it's just, it's a really bright album, and it's, it's a lot more bright-sounding and positive than Expert or Cholera, like... It's a, a paralleling Janelle and being a lot more optimistic instrumentally, a lot more brighter, a lot more positive, a lot happier. Sorry about that. The card on my uh, my mic died because I don't know if you know this, but I use a new mic now. I use my Zoom recorder to do my voice. So I do have, I am recording myself in stereo. I don't know why because it's a stereo pair and I don't really feel like isolating mics or anything. I, I like having a soundscape in my discography reviews. That's the, that's the, that's the word of the video. Soundscape. But anyway, uh, Buckminster, it's a really good record that does a good job of introducing a concept that you may not be aware of, of expanding their sound, and still sounding really crisp as a band. The last note I would like to make about this record, besides my favorite song, is that it's the last, I believe the last, I don't want to say it's their last, but it might be the last, um, album of theirs with their original drummer Nate who moved out of Chicago um he moved and they got a new drummer that they had toured with before uh but my favorite song on the record is Inspectors of Inspectors it's a really good song and the video is awesome if you haven't seen the video check it out but yes Buckminster good album now let's talk about their latest release shall we now the next album they released and their latest album to date is called Magnificent which was released a couple of months ago and uh, I really like this record. It's it's a really good record that came out this year. I don't... 
it's not my favorite album of theirs, but it's it's still really damn good. Um, it does a really good job of using utilizing what they've done so far. You have tracks like Circuit Us and Your Mountain, which have the keyboards a lot more, and they're, they're again, throughout the album, as more of a backbeat, but uh, they also do a good job of going backwards in sound, like on All Quiet, which kind of sounds like a cholera track. Like, the, the instrumentation or anything sounds a bit more quirky and weird, like on Cholera and Janelle, but it still has that vibe of Buckminster, just a bit more uh, aggressive sounding. Um, and they do have their moments where they kind of sound like they did on Buckminster, like Pyramid City and stuff, which have this really bigger chorus sound. Uh, and on, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's um, Men of Action. They, the, those two tracks right there, or those two tracks are good examples of ones that have the big chorus sound that was present on Buckminster and Expert and has that kind of instrumentation that they've kind of, made their standard in terms of a big chorus, good chords, really echoey sound. And there's one track on here that's actually very different for them, and that's Your Mountain, Your, your Mountain essentially is what it is, but it's, it's on the screen now, where uh, it's a bit more stripped down, it's a bit softer, it's almost borderlining indie pop in a sense, like the, the percussion is very light. <laughs> It's very soft instrumentation, percussion-wise, and uh, there's a female vocalist on there. I don't know who it is. Uh, it might be China, who is Weezy Wood's girlfriend. It might be one of the other girlfriends of one of the members or wives or whatever. But um, that's a very interesting track, and I, I like the addition of the female vocals. I think it's a good job of changing the dynamics of the band. And um, while this isn't a concept album, it still has that style of uh, Buckminster. It's it's, a, it's kind of like a hodgepodge of their last four records into one, and I really enjoy it. I think that it's it still flows very well. Uh, the production is still really well done for them. And it's I know that there's like a big concept behind the songs. I just don't know what it is because I didn't get the book. You can get, like, a book that comes with the album, but I bought it digitally, so I didn't get it. But you can get it. I don't know if they're still available. I don't know if it's still available, but I'd recommend getting it just to invest more into the songs because the lyricism of this band is very interesting. I haven't... I barely talked about it because it's so just strange. They use very interesting metaphors and they use very interesting stories or very small set pieces to tell a good story, like Bike... And stuff like that. And I honestly, I'd like to know what a lot of these songs are about. I just don't have the reading material to do so. Because unlike popular band, like unlike bigger bands, they don't have songbooks with their stuff. So it's hard for me to read what it is about. So, yes, it's very hard to do so. But nevertheless, it's still really good. It's very interesting. Very interesting music. And um, I wanted to discuss this band for a couple of reasons, not just because I, I love this band and I hope that they get more exposure through my review because a lot of people seem to like my discography reviews, but they're a band that, that has done so little with their sound, or so much with their sound in so little of time. They started off very raw and aggressive, and they still have that in there, like I said, on tracks like All Quiet and stuff, but they do a good job of ramping their production up each album and making each album bigger and bigger. And this is a great example of them kind of retrogressing, but still pushing forward. And I think that hopefully this band goes somewhere more, bigger, more popular, because they're, wor they, they, they're worth investing into. They have really interesting lyricism, and they have really just awesome things about them. I really enjoy this band, and I really enjoy this album. Uh, the drum work is fantastic. I haven't... This is the the new drummer. I don't know who it is, but he does a good job of, of keeping that intricacy that was present on the last few records while kind of being a bit more pulled back, in a sense. Because you still have tracks like, again, Pyramid City and stuff, which have that kind of intricate... Not completely intricate, but a lot more intricate than typical just patterns. And providing a good dynamic backbeat while being kind of a simplistic backbeat when he needs to be in. Yeah. I I like this album a lot, and I like this band a lot. Uh, my favorite track on the album... Probably Man of Action. I really like Man of Action. It's a really good song. The chorus of that, that song is really good. It's got a really good um, scale down and all that good stuff. It's, it's fun. It's a good song. It's a good song. It's a good short song on the album. Good short song. That's pretty much it. 
I don't have any much to say about this band other than you need to get their albums. That's only five albums, and a lot of them are, all of them are not expensive. So you should get this, this all the albums about this band. As always, if I can find them on YouTube, my favorite songs are linked below. You'd like to hear them for yourselves. Um, I'm going to get out of here and do my thing that I do with my stuff. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this discography review. I'm back. Uh, it was weird doing this again <laughs> to sit down and just talk about a bunch of records. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, no music in this one. I'm trying to cut back on that as well, using a lot of music in the background. But anyway, you guys have good days, lives, and situations, and I will see you another day.